What's going on guys, it's Bromley, and I wanna to talk to you guys about a couple of things. There's going to be some, some uh, format changes, and I wanna to talk, to, talk about some things that are coming up down the pike. If you're not interested in any of this, you can jump ahead to the next segment. We'll start off the video topic, but for those of you who are, who have been watching the channel, I got a couple of updates for you. So I'm trying to get a handle on how to uh, keep this channel rolling and growing, but also productive, you know, not sell out too hard. And it's interesting to try and get your brand figured out, figure out what you're going to sell and what your mission statement is going to be and how you're going to present yourself while also abiding by the rules that YouTube has for you. So that's been a fun experiment. And by rules, I mean the things that they select for, that they prioritize, because you only have this much screen uh, to advertise to each individual person. So to try and stand out is, is not as straightforward as you might think. So the rules... Uh, prioritize people who do kind of longer fleshed out videos. They like watch time. So if you think the 15 to 25 minute videos are annoying, that's what they select for because people are more likely to watch more of it. The jump cuts you guys think are annoying. People are more likely uh, as a group are more likely to watch. If you have like the Brian Alzru like jokes every 25 seconds with the black and white screen, those little cutaways. So I like doing the longer videos. They just take a little bit more time. And you guys have seen my frequency drop off a bit since things have no, uh, normalized. You know, beginning of the shutdowns, I was trying not to go crazy. So I was doing three, four, five videos a week. And I enjoyed that. And I got a lot of growth out of it. You guys responded to it very well. But I don't have the capacity to do that now. So I'll do like one or two a week. There might even be a week where I can't get to it. So I want more content out. So I'm going to take a page from some of the more high volume, high frequency YouTube guys I remember being inspired by Elliot Hulse early on before his crazy ass joined the uh, Dexter men's cult from season five. Uh, but he did a lot of, he put out a lot of good content. He did a lot of just the quick four or five minute videos on whatever popped into his head. So that high volume approach, it works, frequencies higher, but YouTube doesn't tend to select for those as much or spread around as much. So I'm going to try and take the best of both worlds. I'm going to commit to daily videos. That's a commitment I'm going to try for the next few months to see how it goes. It's easy to set up a camera, do five minute riff off whatever is off the top of my head. And I think you guys have some value. I'm gonna use the Q and A's probably specifically from Patreon. Go ahead and check out my Patreon. We got a couple of good videos up from there. I'm gonna leave them up there for a few months before I release them to the general population. But uh, I'm prioritizing Q and A's from Patreon members. So go ahead and check that out if you're interested. Uh, this topic actually comes from Daniel Earp, who is a Patreon member. Uh, of what we're going to talk about. I didn't write that up there for you. I wrote it up there so I actually remember what the topic is supposed to be. So that's what we're going to try. I'm still going to commit to one or two a week of the longer fleshed out, either technical instruction, programming stuff, training philosophy, whatever. But I think there's a lot of detail I can cover by not having videos that are so keyword specific and so oriented towards one topic so that they rank in search and all that. As fun as that is to try and do, it also limits me. So we're going to try a blended approach. We'll see how it goes. I look forward to your guys' feedback. So getting into this question comes from Daniel Earp. How strong can I get realistically without weight gain? Now he cited wanting to keep like a 37 inch waist, sorry, 37 inch waist for health purposes. Uh, now the one thing about this question, I find it funny because when I got into lifting and I think for decades before muscle growth was the goal and everything kind of overlapped. If you were a power lifter, a weight lifter, uh, an Olympic lifter, uh, a bodybuilder, sorry. Um, the, the goal was to gain muscle. That's the main adaptation that strength training does. And it also has the, the weird trait that it makes you stronger, which is kind of a nice bonus, right? So you can actually focus on gaining muscle and indirectly get strong. And you can also specify strength, train specifically for strength. And you can actually do that to a degree that doesn't grow you quite as much but the less muscle you have, less potential for strength you have. So there's kind of a trade off there. So it's only in the last 10, 15 years maybe that powerlifting has gotten very popular and you see people instinctively wanting to niche down into what they feel is the most competitive category. If I can't be absolutely strong, well, the next best thing is focusing on weight. And everybody does that. They always have to put in their weight that you didn't ask for when they're giving you their lifts as if it's supposed to be more impressive. The, the thing is, is that if you're actually oriented towards being competitive, muscle growth uh, it should be the thing that happens first and your frame should be what determines what weight class you're in. So you have guys that, you know, I had a conversation with a forum member the other day. He was a 5'10 and 130 pounds. He didn't volunteer his height. I had to ask him and I'm like, please tell me you're 5'4. 
said five foot 10. And I had to explain that is malnourished. That's emaciated. You're not going to be able to express any strength. I know marathon runners that are five ten that weigh 150. So you have to have a certain amount of mass, but, but people will make the mistake of focusing on staying light first. It was very counterproductive. Now that doesn't mean you have to go into being an absolute mass monster. That's, and there's guys that do that, that stay 80 pounds heavier than they need to. I've gone through that range, uh, that whole phase. It's not fun. And then eventually you start to feel like crap. Your numbers don't go up anyways. And then you're like, I got 40 pounds of body fat afterwards. That's not ideal either. So he cited uh, a certain waist measurement, 37, which is kind of a middle of the road waist measurement. That's not too big, depending on his frame. I don't know how tall he is. But the answer to this question really does depend on what your starting point is. Because if you're the 130 pound guy who's kind of tall and lanky and doesn't have a filled out frame, you're likely not to gain much, if any, strength if you don't start to actively put mass on your frame. Nobody becomes accidentally a 300 pound bodybuilder. Going from 130 to 150 is not a bulk. That's eating like a normal person and reaping the rewards of the most basic amount of physical activity. So in that scenario, not much. But if you are a guy who's more of a normal weight, 180, 190, 200 pounds at kind of average height, you might actually be able to foster a little bit of strength without adding uh, a lot of weight. But the thing is, he's talking about a waist circumference, not necessarily muscle mass. I don't have a lot of empathy or a lot of desire to convey ways uh, so that people can stay as small as possible muscularly to artificially stay in a lower weight class. I think that's counterproductive and kind of a silly goal to have. Uh, again, I think your frame should determine where you go. This guy specifically, since we're talking about waist uh, circumference, we're talking ultimately about body fat, which means, and this is where the overlap I wish still occurred between things like powerlifting and bodybuilding, you should just be training and living your life like a bodybuilder. If you keep your diet in check, if you have a handle on your calories, if you're not eating a bunch of crap, and if you're active four or five or six days a week, it should be pretty easy to keep your waist down. It's only when you swing for the fences, start consuming an excess of calories, you try to put on mass faster than your body can physically grow muscle, that's all gonna become body fat, and that's not necessarily helpful. There's an edge from being in a calorie surplus, but long-term, uh, especially if you're consistently in that calorie surplus, you're going to get to the point where you're not getting a benefit. You're just getting fatter. And as good as it feels to have that compression around your joints and to, you know, be on full bloat mode and going out and just turning yourself into a human forklift, there are health consequences to that. If you go crazy with it, there's aesthetic consequences to that. And again, if you want to be competitive, it's not in your best interest to be 35% body fat. So I think ultimately, if you're focused on not gaining waist circumference, it's very easy. It's diet. Go read some bodybuilding books, go read some nutrition books, figure out how these guys, you're talking about some of the biggest idiots in the world that train in Gold's Gym or Metroflex or wherever else, they can figure it out. You guys can figure it out too. It's literally just your normal strength training routine plus a diet that keeps your body fat at a reasonable level. And th that's really the long and short of it. You should still be oriented towards gaining mass, but especially if you're a little fatter right now than you'd like to be, you might even find that your weight goes down. You get a net drop if you lean out. It takes a long time to gain five pounds of muscle. Five pounds of body fat, you can lose in four or five weeks like that just by making a few simple changes. So remember that. Um, anyways, if we're talking about a, a smaller weight class competitor, or we're talking about somebody in that kind of weird niche where they don't want to grow, I mean, I don't know, an American Ninja Warrior competitor. If you're talking about like a professional assassin that needs to climb rooftops and do a bunch of parkour stuff where strength body weight ratio is really, really important. You can get strong over time, but you're narrow in the type of things you can do. It has to be neurologically specific. You don't have the luxury of eating the calories you need to eat. Um, so you have to keep your caloric intake artificially low. And that's going to basically require a lot more time to gain a moderate amount of strength. And then genetics play a big role. If you don't have the ability to grow muscle, because that's the easiest thing to do across all people, then you're talking about you know fast switch to slow twitch ratio. You're talking about tendon insertions, neurological activity. There's a lot of things that aren't quite as trainable. So you're putting a cap on that as well, but you know what, to each their own. So that's all I got to say about that. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments, check out my Patreon, shout out to Daniel Earp for the question. We got a lot more of these coming. Um, and if you want your question featured, go ahead and sign up for the Patreon and I'll be taking the best questions from those on a daily basis. Thanks for watching guys. Till next time, this is Bromley. I'll see you.